Good morning. Remember, they're muted. Yeah, <laughs> they can unmute themselves, but uh, <laughs> let's uh, let's mute ourselves so we don't get uh, pick up background noise. Uh, while we'll do it, obviously the the big topic today is, as I, I believe you all know by now, uh, is that we have been deemed an essential business by the federal government. Uh, <laughs> I see Scott celebrating. The, uh, the reality is, however, it does not change a great deal. Uh, I, I just sent out, uh, again, I thought I'd done it yesterday, and if, I, if I, it's been redundant, uh, I apologize, but I, I just sent out about 15 minutes ago the guidelines uh, as issued by the California Association of Realtors. And uh, so you, you each should have a, a copy of it. And for all intents and purposes, our company guidelines will mirror CAR's guidelines. Chris, uh, Chris and I were given the opportunity on Saturday to provide some feedback to CAR, which, uh, which Chris did. And Chris, why don't you just share what your feedback was, and then we can we can discuss these these items. Um, my feedback to Sarah. Yes. Basically, if you read through all of the uh, guidelines, it pretty much went along with what we'd said before. I mean, a lot of this was common sense, um, <clears throat> but then it got a lot more specific when it came to the showing of property. And they were saying that they, they felt the only way we should be showing property is if when we, if we had to do it um, in person, that we made sure that we gloved up, we masked up, we on every single showing that we, if we were showing them multiple properties, we threw away the gloves <clears throat> after each showing. And um, um, I, thoroughly disagreed with that because if any of you are watching news at all, and I don't know how you can escape it, every time you turn anything on, the news is there. Um, they are screaming for more masks and more gloves in the hospitals. They need, all of the first responders, all the healthcare professionals need these things. And we're being told, go out there and get this stuff and then put it on every time you show a property, throw it away, put it on, throw it away, throw it and I wrote back and I just said, I think it's irresponsible and um, we can't with good conscience tell our agents to go out there and try to find this stuff and then do this on every single showing. And if you're not sick and they're telling you don't go out there at all if you're sick and you have to sign an agreement saying that you're not sick, there is no need to do this and your clients are not supposed to be sick either. I believe they're supposed to sign the addendum too, saying they're not sick. Um, if everybody's not sick, you know, the CDC says there is no need for everybody to glove up, mask up, all that stuff. However, um, the other side of that issue is where you find these things. Finding all of these items is not that easy. I'm sure all of you have tried and um, not been very successful. Every now and then someone will Post. Oh, I just found a box of gloves. You can get them. Ace Hardware was selling one box of gloves per customer down in Belmont Shore this weekend. But I think they sold out by Sunday evening. Um, you know, it's, I don't know. We don't agree with that part of it. But the other parts of that, I don't think are unreasonable. Um, asking people to sign an agreement um, that um, you're healthy, that you're not sick, um, making sure your clients are aware of the dangers. It's a little more what they want us to tell, make the clients aware of, I think is a lot more, um, um, maybe the word is frightening or scary, could be to some clients. However, if they want to keep their houses on the market at this time and they want to show them, and they want to sell them, then the reality is the reality. And they should be okay with um, signing any kind of an agreement that says they're aware of what the risks are. 
in today's market and they're okay with it. Um, that's kind of my feelings in a nutshell after reading it. It's a lot of words about the same thing, but it, it, I felt that it boiled down to what we have been trying to tell you to do all along. Now, it's like I said, just a little more, a lot more steps. So I'm sure you Thanks. all have something to say. Thanks, Chris. Uh, and uh, as you saw, Nick posted on chat, if you have questions, uh, please enter them in chat and we will, uh, we will get to them uh, as they come in. The, uh, once again, the guidelines, did you all receive the guidelines that I sent out? Good. I see, I see most acknowledging that they did. Uh, are there any? Tracy, um, regarding Belmont Shore Billings hardware, that was this, that was this weekend they put it in the paper and I heard they were sold out last night. So they had a line all weekend long going in and out of Billings. They were only selling one of everything to everybody. They had toilet paper too. They had paper towels. Paul, the uh, the city is in concert with the the federal CDC that uh, the CDC guidelines. Uh, we are not more restrictive here. I confirmed that yesterday. Uh, so uh, we're. Uh, we're fine. I mean, these guidelines are pretty restrictive in themselves. No more than two people in a house. The seller should not be there. Uh, so if we, uh, if we abide by them, I, I think we're going to be uh, perfectly all right. Maggie, is the uh, a requirement now, or do we only need it if someone is canceling? Uh, it, CVA is not a mandatory form. It is, it's not a required form under any, any circumstances. Uh, and to Laura, uh, I don't see the guidelines in my email. I just sent them, Laura, roughly 15, 20 minutes ago. And Casey has posted them in Inside Scoop. So you have them uh, in a couple of, couple of places. Uh, Linda Eisenberg, do you have one for the buyers? I'm not. I'm not sure what it what you're referring to. We have, uh, by the way, we have sent out authorizations for both buyers and sellers to, to uh, for you to get signatures on those. But please don't assume those are legal shields. They are just general, general comments. I mean, excuse me, general authorizations that that we don't believe will provide a legal shield for uh, for us uh, during these times of the pandemic. The pandemic, uh, as we shared, I believe it was in Friday's call, is uh, there's there's really nothing that will protect us. We can get in writing. Uh, However, those authorizations do allow you to comply with these new guidelines because they, uh, they strongly recommend you get written authorization uh, from both buyers and sellers. So you have those authorizations. Casey, I think they're in scoop as well, aren't they? I think in light of these new um the new guidelines that just came down, I think that the authorizations we sent out are not near inclusive enough. I think they're going to have to be redone. In fact, I would think that since Carr wrote these guidelines, they would be coming out with some kind of an addendum because what they wanted in their addendum was far more extensive than what we put in our little addendums. Do you know anything about that, Phil? No, Ray? no, I don't, but, uh, you know, different companies have been coming out with authorizations that they're encyclopedic in their, uh, in their length and content. And even those, uh, are Dean Gov Hutchinson said in our call on Friday, he said, they aren't going to be a legal shield for, for you as well. 
Uh, days on market. This, <laughs> I'm hearing a lot about days on market. Uh, nothing has changed. However, if you put a listing on hold, it stops the days on market. Uh, that is the only relief as far as I know. Uh, if you enter it in the market, if the first day you put it on the market, you put it on hold. You don't right. put it active. It goes in with zero days and it stays with zero days. But if it's active and then you put it to hold, that's not true. You've got days on market. And, and of course, Jeff, uh, if, if you all are, are looking at uh, the chat, he has a listing on a vacant stage property. He's not there during showings to ensure nothing is touched, nor is he there to disinfect the key in, in this, on the Supra after each showing. Should I add cautions to agents' remarks telling buyers to do so? And, and you know, Jeff, I, I'm pretty sure <laughs> I, I think it would be a great idea. Uh, it, certainly be complying with the uh, with the new guidelines. Inspections, uh, inspections are addressed in the guidelines, Ellen. We, uh, they should, uh, they should abide by uh, the guidelines as, uh, as we do, the agent can uh, access the property for them, then go back to their car. Uh, you do not want the clients in the property. Uh, the inspector should be uh, disinfected going in. He should be gloved, uh, certainly going in. Uh, the guidelines, I think, speak to it specifically. So, uh, yes, only allow the inspector to be present. Appraisers uh, allowed in the house, yes, on the same guidelines. Uh, as I mentioned, I think Friday, uh, talking to appraisers, appraisers have actually been given the authorization to complete their appraisals without entering the property. Uh, lenders are uh, allowing the appraisals uh, with the understanding that the appraisers did not inspect the interior of the property. Some, some Phil, uh, some are not. Right. Some are uh, not. Yep, that's, that's true. So. You know, one other thing they put in that letter that I disagreed with was um, signage. They said that <laughs> signs are allowed to go up in front of the property as long as there's stake signs. I forgot to write about that. I'll write Sarah again. Um, the point about that is I don't think if any one of you has a stake sign or sales sign, could you raise your hand? Uh, that would be four people out of the ones I can see. So um, <clears throat> they're saying those are allowable, but the ones from the sign companies are not, which I don't understand at all. They wouldn't, they don't expose anybody. They're not near anybody. They don't have any interaction with the sellers. Um, but signs are allowed on the property, it says. And Linda Eisenberg posted, Wells Fargo is not allowing appraisers to go on the property, just drive-bys. Uh, Paul Gustin posted uh, what I believe Paul uses as a uh, notice in his uh, public remarks. Kelly, uh, Chris, would you repeat about the signs, please? Um. What the um, guidelines are saying are that the agents are, you're allowed to have open uh, for sale signs on the property, but they must be stake signs is the way they put it. So I'm gonna write back to them. They wanted input and let them know that probably 90% of the agents don't even have stake signs. Most of the signs are larger ones that go up on um, the, um, the large, um, I guess those are kind of called stakes too, except they said that you install yourself. They did not say signs that were installed by somebody else. And uh, Paul mentioned that the, the verbiage he used was from the MLS, the MLS recommended verbiage. And Casey has posted uh, about all signs in Rapido are still manufacturing signs. 
Uh, if you need a sign that you can install yourself, uh, email or call them direct or, or Casey can facilitate the order. Casey does about everything. She's Wonder Woman. Other questions? Chris Italiano, of course, has, uh, said uh, buyer moving this week. She Googled movers and found several that are working. Again, movers have to take uh, extreme precautions as well. Maggie has a non-COVID-19 question, if that's okay. And of course it is. Okay, <laughs> Ellen cool. says it's not okay. <laughs> Fire <laughs> away, Maggie. Um, quick question actually about Zap. Um, we have a lot of um, you know prospects on a drip campaign right now. And I think some of the emails might not be um, sensitive to you know our, our climate. Is there a way that we can bulk remove all prospects off of drip campaigns? I've been trying to, to figure it out and I can't. That would be a Nick question. Nick? You know, Maggie, I'm not too sure. Um, I have a call today at 11, but I will call them at noon today and I'll try to get you an answer. Okay, thank you. Yeah, no worries. All right. Uh, Teresa Snyder would like to hear about Joe's experience this weekend. He, uh, well, as you can all look at, at chat. I just, I just posted that. Um, yeah. So I showed my condo in downtown Long Beach on Saturday and it was supposed to be just one person. And she came with three people. She came with her parents. Her parents were wearing, um, were masked and then her mother was coughing. <laughs> so now I was worried about, you know, disinfecting the the unit you know with the knobs or whatever they might have touched i mean i let them go in the, in the unit on their own and i stayed downstairs but that's sort of the issue we have with showing property yeah it's uh, it's it's a very slippery slope joe it's not uh, not easy to navigate of course uh thank you for sharing and heidi uh 10 31 time frames i what I can tell you is that I do know that the NAR uh, legislative staff in Washington is working on extension of the time frames. I, I thought we might see it in the, the new CARE Act that came out Friday, uh, but it, it was not included in that. I have a call in to Matt Roberts, who is our federal guy with car to see where it stands and i don't know jeff if you've heard anything uh relative to it but at this point uh, we are trying to get extensions to it i'm relatively optimistic that will happen but uh, nothing confirmed at this point uh ross i don't i don't know of any long beach guidelines at this point in time uh, that would go against the best practices. Uh, the, the best practices are from CAR's legal team after they digested the, the, new, uh, the new standard Saturday night. Uh, so I, at, at this point, we don't know of anything. Of course, we'll let everybody know as soon as, as, soon as we do. Um, <clears throat> Jeff just sent me a... Um an email showing that he found a reusable signpost that's um, on Amazon. It was $85, but you guys, we have a bunch of um, the metal signposts. If you use those, um, you just need signs that are drilled at the top and the bottom and the middle, two holes, and then you just put, you know, screws and a bracket on them and they hold those signs in front of the house. So we've got plenty of those posts left from the days when people used to use those on open house signs and for sale signs. So um, if you want to, um, you know, check them out from the office, if you need them, you can get them. I'm, you know, we haven't had a million listings, so I'm sure we're okay as far as having enough of them for whoever needs them. 
Steve has, uh, he says, uh, general sense from, from every, uh, from all the listing agents, are you holding inventory, are you, are you holding inventory off the market until things change? Uh, and Sarah's saying yes to Steve. Lori is saying yes. Jeff is saying yes. Uh, Ross is as well, holding until things change. Kelly is networking her hold listings. Uh, Jennifer says yes. Depends on the situation. What I can share with you is uh, is that Possibly I know. Yes, Stuart. Yes. Yeah, you you can see him, but uh, as you know, it's uh, we have had agents who are off market. Uh, marketing their listings to their sphere. They're, they're talking to agents within their sphere and marketing that way, but they're not putting them on the general market. Uh, while that's uh, contrary to their, our normal uh, way of conducting business, it seems to be, uh, there, there certainly is a rationale for it during these times. Uh, Janie's, uh, Janie's logic is sound. Uh, they're discouraging post signs because they're afraid someone will put a flyer box on it. Oh yeah, that was the other thing they said in the uh, um, in their guidelines was all of your flyers, you're not to leave any flyers in the property. Um, vacant or not vacant, there's to be no flyers in the property. All your flyers are to be uploaded into the MLS, not in the property. Okay, I mean, I understand the reason if somebody's standing there and just flipping through the flyers, eh, you know, um, this virus can live on paper, any kind of surface, and nobody's going to go through and continually sanitize the paper and wash away all of your print anyway. So let's and not Lori, put the... Excuse me. Lori's question is, should we take our flyer boxes down? I think it would be prudent to yeah, do Yeah, you have to, according to this. Yeah. Uh, and also, can we share listings? Inside Scoop would be an ideal place for us to share all of our listings. Uh, they essentially off market, but that, that actually complies with ML, MLS rules and regulations because you're marketing with inside the company. That's uh, absolutely uh, allowable. I mean, I don't think, uh, it would be a good idea to instruct agents to leave business cards when they show uh, because all have to be made. I would, I think it's prudent if all showing appointments will, you know, be made, be made through the listing agent. I think that an they have to be, that would be prudent. Yeah, I think they have to be made through the listing agent. Uh, just, just a quick note, uh, Phil. So, I've made appointments where the agents have instructed me to provide their clients with uh, my business card. So at this point, it seems as though that interaction should cease, right? So what I did is I, I uh, sent them a digital copy of my business card instead. But um, just letting you know that that's something that, that I was instructed to do by a listing agent. Yeah, Jaime, that's, that's a great idea. Thank you. Uh, Christy is saying, I think we should start an off-market list that is updated and... Uh, added to the weekly news. Uh, I'm sure that uh, Casey can accommodate that. She accommodates everything else. <laughs> there are still direct use of lockbox out there. Go direct. You'll note in the, in the guidelines, they say that the lockbox should be sanitized after use. I think what she's referring to is um, not having to make appointments. Are those referring to vacant houses, Heidi, or are they referring to houses that are occupied? I'm thinking, oh, if they're vacant houses, then yeah, there is no need to make the appointment. And I still don't think you need to leave. Um, I, I still don't think you should be leaving cards. 
Yeah, I, I totally agree with that. And yes, Casey's getting her acknowledgments, certainly well deserved. Any any other questions? Tonight, 6.30 happy hour, let's do it. We, I don't know, we could be doing happy hours every night at one source or another, right? Hey, I'm not chatting yet because my fingers don't go to the chat thing yet, but uh, I spoke to some of the MLS, Stephen Mead, and days on market are not counted when the house is put on hold. I was told that yesterday. I was told that again last Friday, but I confirmed it yesterday. You can, right. What did you just say? He said that he talked to Stephen Mead and uh, days on markets do not count when the property's on hold. Right. And you can see Jeff's, uh, Jeff's response. It's uh, the hold status is actually hold do not show, although it does not accumulate days on markets. I'm not sure it's considered an off market listing need to need to check congratulations Stuart Stuart Yomac has got Yomac has got a uh, closing of a sale tomorrow he's asked the listing agent to do a coronavirus deep cleaning and the seller has agreed Casey, is uh, anyone wishes to pitch an off-market property and have it sent out on a weekly news, I am more than happy to add it. We will start that this week. I will send out submission info and deadlines, et cetera, whatever it takes. Thank you, Casey. Who does Heidi the cleaning? Says, Please share the listings. I have buyers. Wait, who does the cleaning? What cleaning? The, the deep cleaning right? and, and your, your yeah, just said no. just, yeah i mean like who who are we hiring to do these deep cleanings if they're if there's coronavirus in the houses i mean are are, are cleaning services working now i don't think that's essential is that I, i'm just curious if anyone's i don't i don't know who's doing it for the seller uh there is a question here uh from uh, tony unemployment the the care act CAR, I, I believe this morning you all received a notice that CAR has their hotline up and active uh, as of today. I will, uh, I will resend that in case uh, you, you may have trashed it or overlooked it, but CAR has a hotline uh, to address all questions concerning the elements of the CARE Act, the, the unemployment, compensation, et cetera. And uh, Janie's posted, Mariana's cleaning does a COVID cleaning. I, I contact Janie for the, uh, the information. Cardinal Esco does too, contact uh, uh, Nancy Glass. Bill. Deep cleaning with the mask and everything, contact Nancy Cardinal, Cardinal Esco has access to COVID deep cleaning firms as well. Well, all, the all of the professional cleaners do that. We have them too. They're all, all the professional companies do that. Janitorial services, our services do that. They, but they do commercial usually. Okay. And Kelly, I don't know the answer to you. Do we file unemployment as agents or as owners of our escorts? I would say as an agent. I would say as an agent too, but if you get paid solely under an S corp, I don't know how you do that. So it depends probably on how you get paid. Because that's what they look at is your payroll record. Janie is sending uh, information to Casey for her to post. Jaime, uh, what, are, what are the uh, potential repercussions to us as agents if one of our clients is infected by the COVID-19 virus? It's discovered it was a result of a real estate activities. This, assuming the COVID forms were signed by, we do not have legal shield to that. Uh, 
That is, of course, That's one it. of our worst concerns. Uh, there's not, uh, there's not uh, any uh, written how do they defense prove that? for that. I mean, I think the things that I've read from the legal legal counsels that we get all this stuff from, it's going to be extremely hard from any one person to prove that they got this virus from any one person unless they knew that it was one specific person had the virus, came in and gave them the virus. If it was their home was being shown by multiple people it's going to be very hard to prove that someone in that group maybe had the virus, didn't know they had the virus, you know. So it, that's a really difficult situation. It's, I don't know that people are going to be suing. I don't, you know, it, it's, it's an ugly, it's going to be a, a huge payday for lawyers, I guess, if they all get into that. But um, medical malpractice is a horrible mess and it's very expensive for anybody to go down that road so hopefully we're not going to be faced with any of that so i have i have a such it's jennifer i have a situation where literally my clients won't do anything digitally so they're requiring me expecting me to keep going and picking up stuff and all that it's like the opposite i feel like if i get it I'm going to be wanting to sue them because it's just ridiculous. Like I wish that I could, there was something that I'm trying to think of something I can send out just to explain how important it is for us to really keep the, I know. think I would mask up then and glove up with someone like that. If that's the only way they'll meet with you. Yeah. Yeah. And you want to protect yourself. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Paul, has a question on, on an appraisal. And by the way, Bill Chris and I have talked uh, last Friday. Uh, I was hopeful of him being on the call today. I will have him on the call. We are going to do a call Wednesday at 9 a.m. We're, we're, we want to try and return to normalcy as much as possible. So we will have our, our call on Wednesday at 9 a.m. And I am uh, hopeful of having Bill Chris there for appraisal questions. He actually called me Friday because he's looking for feedback. They, they really aren't certain, except Paul, I, I think to answer your question, uh, there will be an impact on value, uh, at least initially, it will not be substantial. Uh, I would imagine, uh, you know, particularly if your owner believes uh, the values have come down, I, I, I think he's, I think that's probably an accurate assessment to a degree, uh, not dramatically, but certainly uh, to a degree. So I, I would, you know, it, it's very small, N nothing more than 5% would be my, would be my guess, if, if anything at all, quite honestly. Hey, Phil, can I ask you a question? Do you remember last week when we had our meeting, uh, we were talking about the AVID, and you said that Carr was working on, I think, three responses? Yes. And did you get anything? Because no. nobody else has. No, I haven't. Uh, so I just wrote Sarah and asked her about that. Good, good. We'll get those out to everybody as soon as we get them. They, they told us on the call on Friday that they would be getting getting that out by the end of the day, apparently they have, uh, they're, they're overwhelmed. I mean, the CAR staff is, is uh, working overtime as well. Gary asked if we were suggesting going in separate cars when we show property. Yeah, we said that last week, we'd say it again this week, absolutely go in separate cars. Don't ride in the same car with anyone unless you drive a limousine and you've got the glass up between you and the back seat. Hi, everyone. Yes. Hi, Cynthia. Hi, Chris. This conversation is really almost making me sick to my stomach. Do you guys understand that this, is, this virus is getting worse? It's not getting better. And I know that a lot of us need the money, me included, but many of us here are in the high-risk group, or we have children at home, or grandchildren, or elderly parents we're taking care of. There is no way that we can protect ourselves 
100% from this virus. So this is gonna be a very personal decision. And I may have to show property too. I may have to list something. This is gonna be a very personal decision, but all of the technical stuff and all of the legal stuff and all that stuff is secondary to our lives and the lives of the people we love. And this is very, very scary. Having said that, I understand what we're up against here. I understand it completely. I just want everyone to be safe and healthy. I love you guys. I've been doing this for 30 years. I've never been up against anything like this before in my life, personally or professionally. And I just want you all to know that I love you and I want you all to be safe. And I want you to think long and hard about this business and what you're gonna do out there. And please protect yourself as much as you can. And Chris, I totally agree with you on the masks and all that. I have a, a niece who is a paramedic and I have a daughter who is a surgical nurse and I have a son-in-law who is an anesthesiologist. And there is no one more afraid for them than I am. So I just want you all to be safe. Cynthia, thank you. Thank you. I think that echoes everybody's feelings. I, you know, I, we, we have found that these calls have been uh, appreciated and very valuable to many because there are so many questions about I, this. And I agree with that, Phil, totally, I do. The, the underlying, obviously the underlying tenor of all of this is to be safe, take care of yourself. And, and as Cynthia said, they're very personal decisions. Uh, we don't want anyone to put their, uh, put their lives at risk, of course. Uh, and I think we, you know, we hope to God that nobody thinks we're pushing you out there to do something you don't want to do. We're only trying to help you do this in a manner that's safer and, and better for you and your clients. Um, trying to give you a better way to practice the business that we're all doing. If any of you choose not to do this, Lord knows we understand. Um, you know, I'm working from home these days because I'm in one of those categories. You know, I think I'm old. That's what my family tells me. Can't believe it, but my family says I am. So I'm, you know, I'm working from home as much as possible, or now it's all the time. I feel like I'm in prison. But anyway, you know, enough said about that. Um, fun at being at home, cooking. I cook now. Isn't that fun? So, um, you know, we're all doing what we have to do to um, make these times as good as we can possibly make them and stay safe and healthy. And um, Joe's cuddling his dog. <laughs> That's cute. Anyway, Cynthia, um, thank you. That was very heartfelt, I know. And it's, it's scary for a whole lot of people. And, uh, and I do appreciate these, these video chats. I really do. I think they are important. I've gotten a lot of messages from people. I don't people. want to lose sight of what's really important out there. It, right. Over and above the technicalities and the things we might have to do for our clients. And how Jennifer was saying, she's got people who don't want to do digital and she's got to show up there. Are you kidding me? Um, you know, that kind of stuff just scares the Jesus yeah. out of me for everybody. So anyway, just uh, be safe and healthy. I love you guys. On another note, Mo Shabani reached out to me yesterday and he said, I'm absolutely going crazy staying home. If anybody needs anything at all, or you know anyone who needs anything, he'd be happy to run errands, help him out, buy groceries, deliver things. He's kind of going nuts sitting home. So. And Marlena posted a, a similar comment uh, she's there for for you as well uh you know I, I think one of the things i'm proudest of is is the fiber of this company and each of you uh the fact that uh we have people willing willing to help uh certainly speaks volume the uh the fact that we have you know today we had at 1.80 participants in this call, uh, that's, that's far more than we typically get at any one meeting. And I, and I just think it points out 
uh, the need that we all we all have for you know social interaction, human interaction, and and that's that's part of the rationale in doing these every other day. Uh, and we this is a this is a family. We've always considered it that, and uh, we do things together. We work together, and we'll get through this together. Uh, you know, we just we we need to stay strong. Uh, well said, Phil. Well said. Question. Uh, let me see. A client who uh, has a house rent in Long Beach was asked by the tenant to lower the rent. What are her obligations and could the tenant stop paying for a couple of months? And the uh, it, it's up to the owner. It's up whether they, they want to do it. Uh, we, we've heard stories. I've heard a lot of anecdotal stories of, of landlords lowering the rent during these times to help people out. As you all know, there are eviction moratoriums in place. Tenants can, can stop paying, uh, you know, the rent and they cannot be, uh, they, they, you can be evicted. Not paying your rent is a cause. It's, it's just cause. So you can evict a tenant for a non-payment of rent. It just seems a, like a, a real harsh measure in these these times. It's it's a personal decision, much like. Uh, I think what we, I read a blog, that, Phil, that, that, that said you can't get them out of the house. Yeah. Yeah. Sheriffs won't come and t kick them out. Courts, you can't get in the court to do the final eviction. So I mean, the whole thing is like you can start the eviction, you can do the paperwork, but when it comes to the final step of getting kicking them out of the house. You can't follow through with a court appearance. You can't follow through with sheriffs throwing them out in the street. You can't do the final portion. So I heard, I heard, I heard I'm sorry, but I heard the opposite to that. I heard that like, unless they're, they had not paid their rent prior to this happening, this decision, if they were up to date on their rent until this happened, there's no way that they can be, I mean, yes, they, they don't have to pay for three months. That's what I heard if they, if they can't, as long as they let the landlords know. Yeah, they have to work out a payment. They have to let the, they have to talk to the landlords. You have to work out a um, forbearance thing with the landlord. But, but you the, know, catch, the landlord, catching up, yeah. catching up on three months' rent is almost impossible for most people. You know, Lori posted that her and Dennis have put tenants on payment schedules. Uh, I would say that is being a responsible landlord during these times. Matt, to your question, uh, if you have a client on a single family home that wants to sell, can they evict the tenant? Uh, unfortunately, putting the house up to market is not a just cause. Uh, no, it's not. You, you can't do it, un unfortunately. That's, that's not a, a COVID-19 related issue. That's the new uh, rental control laws. Uh, and Chris Italiano is thanking Mo for his call yesterday. I, I have to share with you. Uh, Mo sent me a photo. Mo, out of boredom, shaved his head. So, so we got to give him something to do, you guys. <laughs> yeah, we got to get. We got to keep Mo busy. That's a Britney Spears move. He just became Britney Spears. <laughs> <laughs> well, Phil, you and I already shaved our heads. That, well, yeah, yeah, long time ago. I, I think Kathy asked if uh, tenting your house would kill the virus. I have no idea. Why don't you ask Vince Driscoll or one of the other termite guys? Because that's a termite question. Yeah, and, and, and Tracy posts, it might be antifungal, but I don't see how it could be antiviral. And I say we're not termite people, so yeah. don't we don't know. Uh, and Maggie says, to, oh, tenant, Jeff it. says, tenant has to provide proof of hardship letter from employer that they have been laid off or hours cut or that they are sick with the virus and a letter from the physician. Oh, okay. Absolutely. Otherwise, they'll all just jump on the wagon and say they need help when they don't. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I did have my tenants call me. I asked what I would do for them. I don't think everyone's going to jump on the boat. Sorry. <laughs> that annoys me. <laughs> I don't think everyone, to, to, the, to the point earlier, Cynthia, there's a lot of people who are going through hell right now. So let's, like, let's not think the worst about people. I honestly don't think a lot of people are going to be doing that. I'll chime out now, but that, that actually annoyed me. 
I think that, um, I don't know that anybody's trying to annoy anybody, but I think that right now, everybody on each side of the uh, coin has problems. I mean, whether you're a landlord or whether you're a tenant, you've got problems. If your tenant doesn't pay rent, you still have to pay the payment. And, you know, so we all have issues right now in this market. So um, I don't know, Laura, your answer. What if they're an independent contractor and they're a tenant? Um, I guess, I don't know, maybe their employer would write them a letter and say that they um, that they're, I don't know. I, I don't know how you answer that. Hopefully they've got a, a landlord who's understanding or easy to work with. Uh, hi, this is Jeanette. Could I uh, just say something? Of course. Yes. Um, I read the day that the essential, that we became essential employees. I, what was that, Friday, I think? Saturday, um, Saturday, Saturday. When that came out, if you read through that, it talks about the fact that um, you can actually have painters in the property if um, specifically they're preparing the property for sale. Um, so I thought, you know, of course they'd want to have to want to do it, et cetera, but just so um, everybody knows, that's, what, that's right. what I read. Yeah, thank you, Jeanette. The guidelines that you all received are very comprehensive. They, they discuss just about every, every possible vendor that we use in the, uh, in the transaction. Uh, Chris Italiano, you have a client that needs to pick up a check at the office. Yes. Uh, Paige is at the front desk this morning. Uh, Linda and Rachel have been there. They, they have been considered essential because of their, of the accounting element, uh, because we want you all to be, uh, be able to receive your, your checks as they come in, both rent and commissions. Uh, just let Paige know and, uh, she will, uh, she will be there to greet them. Um, when they get to the, when they get to the door, there's a note that says, please call the front desk and they have the number there. And then she will meet them at the side door with their, with whatever it is they're picking up, Chris. And Nicole is at the Seal Beach office. And as you can see from the, her photo here, Nicole, uh, Nicole Tuthill is at the Lakewood office as, as well with friends. No, she is not with friends. She has one other person and they're six feet apart. <laughs> now, see, I see more than one. I see three. Are you all six feet apart? It looks like it. Good. I see Gary. Uh, thank you for acknowledging Paige, Linda, Rachel, Nicole, Nicole. I think Tiffany and is Tiffany. in the office. They're the ones in the office. Nikki's still working. Kelly Smith says she's six feet from Nicole. Thank you. Any, uh, any other questions? I do. I have a question. Yes, Jose. In the guidelines where it says any person entering a property shall provide by declaration that to the best of their knowledge, they are not currently ill with cold or flu, yada, yada, yada. How are they doing that by declaration? You know, Jose, that's not something we had accommodated for in our, in our authorizations. Uh, I think it would be a good idea for the agent that they are acknowledging to do it on a video on your phone. Uh, would be my initial response. Uh, so if I'm the listing agent and a buyer and their agent are going to one of my vacant stage properties, how am I, am I supposed to get that or is that buyer's agent supposed to get it from their buyer? I would ask the buyer's agent to get it and, and send it to you. Okay. I, I think, you know, we just, we haven't had time to, uh, prepare a new authorization that complies with uh, with the new guidelines, but I just think that's that's a simple way to handle it. Okay, thank you, Maggie. You have the aurora borealis behind you. 
a mom. Uh, oh, <laughs> my mom wants to know if, any, if anyone actually knows someone firsthand, not a rumor with COVID-19. I do. So I think it's, uh, yeah, it appears that people do. Uh, in terms of confidentiality, we will not share who that is. Uh, I do, in Long Beach. Yeah. Yeah, I do too. There are less than 100 I do the cases. same one, Chris. According to uh, council member Susie Price, there were <laughs> less than 100 cases in Long Beach as of yesterday. The two I know, neither one are in the hospital, which is good. They both have, I guess, milder cases. Never met Joe Smith. You have to have shortness of breath before you go to the hospital. Oh, can we update the CBCA transaction activity for the past week? I just got an email, <coughs> excuse me, or a text showing the, um, showing the listing board or the transaction board the pendings for the, um, just for the month, where um, almost all three boards were completely filled out. I didn't get a report on how many sales we had uh, for the last week since our meetings. I think we were gonna get an update today. Yeah, we- You're not in the office, are you, Nick? No, Nick isn't. No. Okay. Uh, Rachel, Rachel has been a little overwhelmed, but we will uh, we will try and get it as soon as possible. Yeah, I'll try. I'll get Rachel to do the report, and then we'll send out a an email to everyone, letting them know the. Um, I did speak to escrow yesterday, and um, Candace said she'd only had one cancellation, and Linda had had. Two, three, I think. Um, but they both had openings in the la last week. So they said the openings are continuing. Uh, people are continuing to work. So that's that's always a good sign. Nikki posted that one of her uh, one of her clients put it open a new escrow today. So that's good. That's always good. Christy, I don't think I'd have the post taken down. No, leave it. Leave it, leave it up. Better to beg forgiveness. Well, if it's done already, it's not new. Yeah. Anything else? Okay, I'm gonna jump off. Remember, remember to uh, use Inside Scoop to post your uh, your listings. Uh, in case he's asking, do we want a seven day market report like we posted last week? Yes. Can yes. you get Rachel to do that for us, please? Yes. I'll talk to her. Uh, You'll talk to her. Why can't Casey do it? She's right there on the call. I thought you were giving me a... a no, Casey can do it. She's in the office with her. Me? No, Casey's mm -hmm. not. I'm not the only Casey. Can you talk to Rachel and ask her if she can give you those updated figures? I already texted her. And once I get the numbers, I'll get the graphic out. Thank you. Thank You're you, welcome. Casey. You're welcome. Any uh, Anything else? Nope. And I'm leaving the meeting. Bye, everyone. Have another meeting. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. Uh, oh. I'm not seeing any other any other chat questions. Just want to uh, also Jeff uh, from Art Carter. Art Art is the CEO of CMRLS, by the way. You can advertise, but we will not fac don't facilitate that advertising regarding of li whether listings are on hold. Jeff, do you want to illuminate on that a little more? You have audio. Sure, Phil. I'm sorry. It takes me a minute to navigate this. I'm getting better at it, though. <laughs> um, in, in response, 
my belief was, and Art just confirmed, that a listing on hold is on hold, do not show. It is on the market. So as far as MLS rules are concerned, that listing is on the market as it's supposed to be by the clear uh, cooperation policy. However, they don't send listings on hold to the aggregators like Zillow, Trulia, Realtor.com, and so forth. So you are allowed to advertise the listing, but they aren't helping you do it. Thank you, Jeff. Any anything else? Tony, thank you. Stay safe, everyone. And 9 a.m. Wednesday morning, we'll have a uh, another meeting. Awesome. In the meantime, uh, please uh, please take care of yourselves. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you all. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Bye, everybody. Bye, everyone. Stay safe. Bye, Blondie. Bye. Bye, Blondie. Thank you, everybody. Bye, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> you silly boy.